What's up, everybody? It's Tropic, back with the showcase for my build order, the China Six Minute Fast Castle. Um, this time, last time I, I showcased the build order, I was I was fighting against an AI. I basically just, you know, very general tips and tricks, um, as well as you know the specifics of the build order. Um, but I didn't really showcase what composition works well. Um, what you do after you've actually reached the castle age. Um, I, I, I talked about it in depth, but I didn't really show it. So today I'm going to be showing two different matches where the China Six Minute Fast Castle worked worked really really well. Um, so in the beginning, I'm going to I'm going to skip through because it's all you know, explained in the uh, video from yesterday, but um, uh, you will see that, uh, I, I will point out that um, my food is behind, my wood line is behind, and my gold is in front. So this, I, I like to be thinking about the uh, you know the the defensive ability of my base. My TC can cover these two spots, right? But my TC, how is my TC going to cover this? How is how is my TC going to protect these builds? So already before the before as soon as I've spotted my gold, I'm thinking I need to I need a barbican. I need a barbican right here. You know I need I need to my landmark my defensive landmark needs to be protecting these gold villagers. And you'll see later on in the game when he tries to idle these villagers and he, he succeeds, but his knight almost dies, you know, trying to kill my bills. So, I mean, otherwise an an, an, out, an outpost isn't going to isn't going to isn't going to defend um, the amount of villagers that you've got on this gold mine, this front gold mine. So, um it's really important that you have a good barbican placement. Um as I did not have in my last video. Um, thankfully, it was against an AI, so not really important. Um, but yeah, I'm. You can see I'm now almost feudal, macroing to get to the castle age already. Uh, using my imperial official as 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 effectively as I can, as efficiently as I can. Um, and I'm also going to start switching builds over to wood um, as soon as I get as soon as I get the resources for the the here here's that knight he ends up getting one but that's just my slow reaction time um, and he honestly he he this knight losing so much health is honestly worth it the 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 bad thing is when this happens and you're up against the French um, and he just heals it all back but um, you, de you definitely don't want to be trading bills for knights um, but not too terrible in this in this instance um, because of how much health that knight lost and that's that's the strength of the Barbican while it's a very simple landmark it is effective um, and I, another thing I want to point out is I'm scouting, I'm scouting out his mass. I'm scouting out his um, base while I'm aging because I need to know what composition I'm going to go with. I need to know what to be building. A lot of y'all ask me, hey, um, uh, won't crossbows just get, you know, w w won't only crossbows die to knights or whatever? Uh, should I go men at arms? Should I be trying to build an artillery mass, etc., etc.? Excuse me. Um, um, but it really just depends on your opponent. I mean, in this case, it's we've got Roos with he's got early knights. He I don't know that he spotted my my. Um, he may have seen this landmark. He he doesn't know that I'm that I'm castle. 
Um, I don't think... Uh, see, I think he's scouted it out. I don't know if this is bugged. Um, but anyways, uh, regardless, I see that he's going. I see that he's going archers, and I know he's got multiple knights out on the field. So, with that, I think crossbows and nest of bees immediately. That's my thought, um, because. The knights can charge at crossbows. They're going to just get gunned down. They're just going to get focused down. My nest of bees are extremely tanky out of this landmark. Like, he's going to be doing siege damage against my nest of bees while all of his knights are getting gunned down. And my nest of bees is going to be firing on his archers. So, um, I'm going to be trading extremely efficiently if I go with that composition. If I were to go... Palace Guards, Nesta Bees, then he would be able to charge me with Knights, um, do a lot of damage, run away, fire on me with uh, Archers, um, run away, you know, etc. He would, he would be able to trade much better um, than, than, than me. So I, I go with this composition instead. Um, and as you see, he, he, he ends up building a lot of Springles, he's a Roost player, so I, later in the game I go with, I go with more of a Springled Mass than a Nesta B Mass, but, um, uh, um, but yeah. So, um, as I'm aging, you see, I'm about to age, and I send a bunch of villagers onto wood, because I need to start expansion. It's really important that I get a bunch of military buildings out. Um, uh, well, military building, a military building to be getting my mass and population, getting upgrades for my, um, getting these, getting these upgrades for my bills, um, taking advantage of the fact that I'm in castle and he's not. So, um, I think the first thing that I send out here is a nest of bees. I start massing crossbows. Um, building a blacksmith, of course. No point in being castle if you can't get the better upgrades. I think I go with the first two tiers of this upgrade. Um, just so that I'm trading, you know, extremely well with knights. Which are, um, while crossbows technically counter knights, knights are still very strong once they get on top of these crossbows. So, I want to be bringing them down as quickly as possible. Um, with my very first mass, I'm going to move out of my base and just really a scouting mass, honestly. I know at this point that um, he's, you know, shitting his pants. I just hit Castle Age. He's got, you know, a bunch of archers and some knights against uh, a nest of bees that's going to come out here soon. And, um, crossbows. He knows he can't win that. So he's going to be macroing to age. It looks like, yeah, he's already going on to gold. Let's see. It looks like he's still training a few more knights. I think he starts macroing to age really, really soon. Yeah, there it is. Uh, all the while, my mass is building. Um, oh, no, he was already aging before that. Um, he's training knights right now. Um, so yeah, uh, as you can see, let's see his mass so far, yep, archers, he's going to be getting the veteran upgrade, I'm sure, yep, 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 it's almost done, and knights, so that's, that's one of the main, that's why it's so important to scout, um, if I hadn't scouted, I probably would have suspected only knights, and gone with, uh, spears, gotten a bunch of spears as well, just wasting resources, honestly. Um, I would have had as much, as many spears, I would have to build more farms, um, you know, mine more wood, chop, chop more wood. Um, so you really want to be scouting as effectively as possible so that you have a general idea of what the enemy's mass is. Um, yeah, he's, he keeps massing archers. 
And uh, once you've scouted out what he's going to be massing, you want to build the exact counter to that. Um, I saw uh, knights and I saw knights and archers. So I want a nest of beats for the archers. Going to destroy the archer mass and crossbows to trade effectively with the knights. Um, so that's basically what 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 you want to be doing. Um, I'm going to send a scouting party basically over. I'm going to send my first mass over to pick off some villagers. I was expecting there to be way more villagers out here. Um, turns out there's not. I only end up getting one. Um, and finding out what he's actually massing. I know what I scouted that he was massing. Knights and archers, but this this just confirms it. And also I'm going to trade I'm going to trade really really well uh, here resource for resource. Um, and keep in mind it's not it's 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 good to be um, trading these resources away, trading these units away in, in this build, because as China, you remass faster than they do, right? You've got an imperial official who makes turns your turns one one archer range into three, turns your incredibly good landmark into an absolute artillery machine. So um, you can trade away these units. You'll remass faster than him and with higher quality units than him. Um, I've had the economic upgrades for these for my villagers. For I think he aged up at um, uh, I don't know when he aged up around four minutes after me, and I was able to get you know I've had I've had these tier two upgrades for so long that it's making a difference. I can trade really really effectively with him and then replenish my army and he's going to be he's going to be the loser of that matchup in terms of resources. So um an another thing I want to point out, I let this nest of bees go down. I didn't start running it away cuz I knew it was going to go down and I wanted to get a second volley off on these um on these archers. So I honestly see it as a positive resource uh, investment because of how much damage I did to these archers. And not only that, but it's tanking so much damage from the knights that my archers, my, my crossbows are able to gun down the knights and eventually you'll see all these knights end up going down. Um, because of the time that that Nest of Bees was able to buy for my crossbows. Um, and both of our masses are, are pretty much eliminated, but you'll see that I'm remassing with higher quality units, artil better artillery than he is, uh, he can't push into me, um, and that's what's really important. I'm waiting for a moment where I can get a critical mass of artillery. That's that's China's main strategy. Um, I'm waiting for that moment when I can get a criti critical mass of artillery and then push into him. Ideally, when you're massing, you don't want to be feeding crossbows one by one into the enemy team. Please don't follow my example. Um, but uh, try as he might, he can't put he can't push into this barbican. Even if he had rams. These, these crossbows, my springles, nest of bees that are coming out, would tear down rams. My, my barbican would tear down these rams. So um, I'm past the point, I've, I'm safe from rams, I'm safe from a bunch of knights pushing into me, you know. I've got, I've got too many high damage units that would just demolish knights. I'm pretty sure this is hand cannon upgraded, yeah. I mean, at the right moment, when I see that he can't remass when I see that his um, I've reached my critical mass. You know, I have five or six springles and a bunch of uh, crossbows, and I'm remassing faster than him. I'm gonna start pushing into his base. We'll see that I take a bunch of engagements that aren't necessarily favorable. Like I don't come out 
killing more units than I than I've lost, but I'm replenishing units faster than him. And um and it ends up being favorable in, in the end. So, especially since my Springles are so much tankier than his, 200 versus 300. I mean, the difference is massive. The difference is truly massive. Uh, this landmark is so good. This 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 landmark is initially what made me think that Fast Castle would be good, and uh, it ends up being really really strong. So another thing you'll see that I did is I miss macroed my food, and that's a bad thing, right? It's a mistake by me, but. Instead of building knights and not being able to train artillery anymore, um, because I'm low on gold, I build a bunch of scouts because they have the same amount of siege damage as normal knights do. Obviously, they're not as tanky, but they get the job done. And you'll see in this upcoming engagement when he's got a bunch of artillery, and you know I've got a bunch of artillery, but but. He's got, I think he's got mangonels and trebuch trebuchets back here as well. Um, they're going to come in handy. But before I can send them in, I need to bring his mass down a lot more than it is. Um, so that these scouts don't get brought down really easily. Um, so I'm trying to get rid of his springles, trying to get rid of his springles. I see the treb. Um... He sends in his knights, trying to take down, under my barbican, you know, trying to take down these these tanky, tanky clock tower springholds. Um, and I realize his knight mass is dead. I'm taking out his archer mass. I'm going to be sending in the uh, scout soon, yeah. And my, my bee is going to be fi firing on the archers, doing a lot of damage. And... Now I know for a fact that his artillery is going to be going down. I'm going to be replenishing. I'm going to be replenishing faster than he is. My nest of bees is going to be doing work on his archer mass, and I decide that now is the time to push. Um, I take out a bunch of vills, uh, bring down his mass. You know he has to. He has to bring vills off to to siege down. I think I had. An artillery, some springles up here. Um, he's losing a bunch of villagers. All these villas are idle. Um, I've done a big blow to his economy, and I back out. And I remass again. And I, I know that I can remass faster than him. You'll see a bunch of this massive amount of wood is going to be spent on a bunch of military buildings here really, really soon. Um, springled scout up here. Um, manages to live, but yeah, bunch of this is this is me preparing for the last push. Um, I've got I'm I'm building my artillery mass. It's 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 um all of these units have plus fifty percent health. It's it's kind of insane. All of these springles. Um, and let's see his mass. He is not remassed even close to as as quickly as I have. And, um, that Mangonel shot actually hurt a, a lot. But, um, I can remass faster than him. At this stage of the game, China is, is past their weak point, and they are able to fight really effectively against other civs. Um, that's the important thing about this build. Um, that's why Fast Castle is so good in these situational, um, in, the, in these particular situations, right? Um, and once I take out his might, his, his night mass, you'll see again, I charge in to get rid of his artillery. Um, the, the rest of the game is, is the same. I'm remassing faster than him. I'm building better artillery than him. I have better upgrades, better economic upgrades. Um, and eventually it just becomes too much and I push into his base and I prevent him from remassing ever again and the game is over. So this is the way you want to play China. Um, this is just one one example, you know, just one just one example. But um, I will show the HRE match. All right, so here's the HRE match. 
I will again skip over the intro because I think my uh, age up is much faster this game um, because I was not harassed, of course. I wasn't forced to idle. Um, but yeah, I see HRE and I see a very defensive map and immediately I think, oh my god, I should definitely fast castle. This is a this is a great this is a great time to fast castle. You want to be you want to you want to be thinking about that every single time. Remember, this is not one of those builds that you go with every single game. This is one of the builds that I see a choke point in the map and a, a sieve that is going to be wanting to but I usually wouldn't be able to deal with. And I see this, and I think, perfect. Time to fast castle. Um, let's see what my age up time is. I think this is much better. Last last game was 6:30, I believe. Six, maybe 6:35. Um, this one ends up being better. Again, my Barbican is out in front of my gold. I don't want these gold fills to ever be idled, and that's why the Barbican goes out in front of the. Um, in front of the uh, gold mine. Um, my scout also sneaking around, making sure I know that he's going with the men at arms rush. Um, I see it, and I know that I've 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 decided on the right strategy, and I'm feeling confident. And I start to macro for the third age. Um, so yeah, I think it ends up being, let's see what time it is. Yeah, it's like 6.15 or something. Yeah, it's 6.17. Um, I place it under my Barbican again. I don't want these bills to be idled. I want, I want, so I, so I need, I need it to be, the, the, I need to place the clock tower near my Barbican. Um, just so that they're safe. They can retreat and garrison immediately if if uh, a horseman or whatever comes out. Um, but I'm not I'm not too worried um, since I already spotted the spotted the barracks. Um, <clears throat> so I, I I put a bunch of bills on wood. Begin my expansion. Um, same you know same thought process as last game. Uh, um. He sees me age up, sends in a few men at arms. <laughs> pretty, pretty weak mass. Um, so uh, these men at arms have absolutely no chance at accomplishing anything. Um, I've already got crossbows coming out, uh, so they're gonna be they're gonna be brought down um, and have no impact. Basically, just end up being a waste of resources. Um, as I as I as I focus on massing crossbows and springolds. Um, again, I, I I like springolds. I'll, I'll bring out some nest of bees as well. Um, for the men at arms. At this point, I believe he is going up. No, no, no. He stays. He, he builds a second town center. Terrible town center placement. I just want to point that out. Um, ideally, you want to be placing your second town center directly on top of a hunt, especially with China. Um, maybe on top of gold and stone. Uh, and start booming. But my opponent is HRE, so I thought, why not go with um, some, you know, fast castle and get out some units that can that can trade effectively with men at arms instead of just have a bunch of archers um, that don't do anything. Um, this game ends up being a really annoying uh, tug of war sort of in the middle, but uh, the writing is on the wall. Um, he ages really late. I've already got a bunch of economic upgrades. I can trade better than him. Um, he doesn't come in with rams. He's too he's too late with rams, you know. So so if your if your opponent isn't extremely fast with rams, 
you're gonna have Springles out, and you're gonna have crossbows out, and the game's gonna be over. Um, we fight for a long time over this little choke point right here, but um, my mass just builds more and more. Um, and like I said, the writing's on the wall. Um, uh, and yeah, I, I I eventually push into this successfully. I think I just at, at one point I ignore this uh, this whole this, I I ignore this tower. This whole game, he's playing catch up. The second he sees me hit a H three and he doesn't have rams, it immediately forces your opponent to start playing catch up. You know, like that's one of the things that's so strong about this. I get map control. I can just freely, you know, walk out onto this gold. Um, I can start booming. I can get the tier three uh, farm upgrades. Tier tier two, I mean. Um, I can start getting these relics. I can I can do all these things um, that my opponent is is uh, thinking that I wouldn't be able to do. So he's not even prepared. Um, uh, that's that's a really strong thing about this build, um, and one of the reasons why it's been working so well for me, um, even at a higher elo. So, um, as you can see, I'm just never going to let him mass. He's never going to be able to remass. The rest of this game, I'm going to be pushing, I'm going to be, you know, getting on top of these uh, archery ranges, constantly killing his mass, making sure he's never allowed to mass, um, remassing faster than him with Imperial officials, um, and that's how you want to play, how you want to play this, this build with China. Um, uh, so yeah, this is, I hope this answered y'all's questions about composition and playstyle with, um, with this particular build order, and if y'all have any questions, please drop them in the comments. Uh, and subscribe for more content like this. I'll be posting a lot over the next few days, so stay tuned.